All right, hey, what's going on? This is Dan Keller, your mortgage advisor at New American Funding. Today is Saturday, uh, February 4th. I want to welcome you to another episode of Making Sense of the Market. This is number five for 2017. I told you at the end of 2016 that I was going to be consistent in providing these weekly updates because a lot's going on with the new presidency coming into the office um, and the markets are going nuts. So, uh, and we're, cons- we're sticking right to that just this last week. So I want to jump right in. I'm going to warn you, today's episode is going to be about five minutes long, but pay attention. It'll be super, super uh, value-packed, I promise you. So uh, making headlines this week, Trump announcing that he's going to repeal the Dodd-Frank Act. But before you freak out, before, because I'm already seeing it on social media, it's ridiculous, um, you have to understand, one, what the Dodd-Frank Act is, and two, 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 you have to understand what part of the Dodd-Frank Act that President Trump is going to uh, repeal. So what basically the Dodd-Frank Act is, is in 2010, um, the Obama administration did a phenomenal job rolling this out. I think uh, there, it, 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 it came under a lot of scrutiny. Me being in the mortgage industry at the time, it wreaked a havoc, changed our business, our industry upside down. But it was positive. It provided a ton of transparency for the consumer. It over-regulated our mortgage industry, which I think got a lot of the ding-dongs out of it, which is good for you, the consumer. So the Dodd-Frank Act essentially was to provide financial stability for, um, of the United States, excuse me, by provide, improving accountability and transparency of the financial systems, essentially to end the too-big-to-fail um, idea and to protect the American taxpayers. So what I wanted to show you, though, is excuse me, and explain the part of the Dodd-Frank Act that uh, really impacted our business was the CFPB, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, under the Dodd-Frank Act, specifically the Consumer Protection Act, provided transparency to the consumer. And that basically was getting rolled out from 2010 all the way to 2015. It's done amazing things for our industry. I don't think, stay tuned though, I don't think that they're going to repeal too much that has to do with the CFPB. We'll see, I'll keep you posted. But for now, the part of the Dodd-Frank Act that I think will be adjusted is that President Trump will give more power to smaller banks to lend money to small businesses, which will then, in return, create jobs. It's all about jobs. So stay tuned on that. I want to transition into the Dow. This is crazy. Another week. Dow is over 20, closes over 20,000. This is big news. This is great news for the economy per se. But what I want to focus on, I want you to kind of focus on that too. If you have some investments, certain investments may be doing better than others right now because of what the Dow is doing. But typically, when the Dow is cruising like this and on a run like this, the bond market, which impacts mortgage rates, drops, which causes interest rates, mortgage rates to go up. We're not seeing that. Look at this. This last week, we saw mortgage rates actually improve, which is a good thing. I want you to pay close attention to this and understand why. Over the last week, economic reports were released that showed um, that over the last month, we created over 227,000 new jobs. Hooray, right? We beat expectations. That's great news. However, headlines. When you look deeper under those headlines, you're going to find out that those 220, the focus was on the wrong type of jobs. The focus needed to be on the jobs that were created were lower paying jobs. Unfortunately, it fell, that fell below the median income levels that doesn't really drive our economy. So cool, Jobs were created, bummer, they weren't the right type of jobs. So that's why the mortgage, the bond market, isn't dropping or deteriorating like it should because of the Dow. So we've got the Dow on this crazy run, Trump for you, if you will. Again, I explained it last week. Two sentences why the Dow is on a big run. Trump spent his entire um, time running for office, promising things that he was going to do. In his first couple of weeks in the office, he's getting to work and he's actually doing things and the markets are responding to that. Whether you believe, whether you agree or disagree, it doesn't really matter. That's what the markets are doing. And so what I want to kind of wrap up in the next 45 seconds is, listen, the new jobs, it basically is showing that American consumers are living paycheck to paycheck. This is more important than ever that uh, you understand this. And this is why I share this information with every single new client that I meet. When we sit down and we do a mortgage planning consultation, we talk about budgeting, we talk about the mortgage, I close with the six steps to financial freedom. This has nothing to do with the mortgage, but it has everything to do with the likelihood of you making your mortgage payments. But ten, fast forward 10 years from now, the situation or position that you'll be in in that time will be much improved if you follow this. So step one, track everything. 
have a personal family budget that you fill out every single month. I hand this out to every single one of my clients. Now, I started doing this about a year ago, so if you're listening to this and you don't have that, message me and I'll send this information, the whole entire packet out to you. If you're just viewing this on social media and you want access to this, message me and I'll send it to you, okay? This is really, really good information. Step number two, be consumer debt free. Don't rack up your credit cards. Pay off your credit card debt every single month. Step number three, build a survival account. From that personal family budget form, you'll add up all your expenses every single month. You need to times that by three and have that, that amount of money in a money market account for a rainy day, a worst case scenario situation. Step number four, max out your IRA and your 401ks. There's a limit in which you can uh, invest in those yearly, max them out. Step number five, this is where you need a, uh, a financial professional and I'm happy to refer you one. You need to invest in the stock market. Step number six is when you prepay your mortgage. I get a lot of people up front that want to prepay their mortgage. They ask about paying off their mortgage early and paying extra toward their mortgage. Yes, it sounds good, but it's not the best idea when you understand the process to financial freedom. So if you have any questions, let me know. I went a little over five minutes. I'm sorry. Tons of good information. If you need anything, let me know. I look forward to connecting with you uh, next Saturday. Take care.